tests, procedures, and medications involved, and what schedules each of these will follow. It tells how long the study will be, details what information will be gathered, and how it will be analyzed. Protocols are carefully reviewed by the scientists, physicians, and the investigators who will be conducting the trial. Every study is led by a principal investigator, an experienced doctor who agrees to follow the protocol precisely. Clinical trials also involve a research team that may include nurses, social workers, and other healthcare professionals. The final protocol has to be submitted to regulatory authorities, such as the FDA and ethics committees or institutional review boards, IRBs, for approval. Clinical trials in the U.S. are reviewed, approved, and monitored by an IRB. An IRB is an independent committee not associated with the company conducting the study. The IRB reviews the study to be sure it is ethical and that the rights of the participants are protected. The government has enacted laws to make sure clinical trials are conducted correctly. These laws also ensure that all investigators and their staff are fully qualified, licensed, trained, and certified to conduct the study. Clinical trials can only begin after the regulatory authorities and the ethics committees or IRBs have given approval. There are many different types of trials, and their design will change for the stage of research and to meet different objectives. Generally, for new medicines, trials are done in phases, with the first studies being small and gathering information to better design the next trials. Phase 1 trials test a potential new medicine for the first time in a small group of people. Phase 1 trials are to gather the first round of information about the safety and side effects of the investigational medicine or device in healthy volunteers or patients. Phase 2 trials give the drug or treatment to a larger number of people, usually with the disease being studied, to figure out the best dose and begin to measure how well it works. The larger number of people means more information on the safety of the medicine. Phase 3 trials are conducted in an even larger number of patients, often thousands. The main aim of these trials is to gather clear evidence of the efficacy, or how well the drug works, and safety of the investigational treatment. When an investigational medicine is studied, it is not usually known if it will be helpful, harmful, or any different than already available treatments. The new medicine may turn out to be less effective or less safe. A new treatment is often compared in one study to the best existing treatment, so researchers are able to better understand and interpret the results. Sometimes a trial will compare the investigational medicine to a placebo or a sugar pill. This is not done if it's a serious illness where patients would be at risk from their disease because they are not receiving any active treatment. Cancer studies often compare patients receiving the best currently available treatment to those receiving that same treatment plus the study medicine. In studies like these, patients are randomly assigned to one group or the other, like flipping a coin. In many studies, neither the patient nor their doctor will know which group the patient is in. This blinding helps researchers get more accurate and unbiased information as the results are not affected by what the doctor or patient thinks. Someone, usually a pharmacist, has the key and can can tell which patients are on the study drug if it's needed to 